Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of this studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for yet another technique talk. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Zero Gravity Percussion, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Mallet Lab, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Rudolph Kralik, Austin Bench, Greg Harris, Scott Rader, and Arthur Lipner. Thank you so much for joining the Studio VIP team. And today's featured studio artist is Bill Sanders. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a Studio VIP or a Studio Artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. And yes, it is time for yet another Technique Talk Challenge. You might remember two weeks ago, I did a challenge video challenging myself to learn a bark prelude in just one hour. And I really didn't expect that many people to watch that video. So thank you so much for watching that video, which is why we're gonna do yet another challenge this week. So last week I posted an Instagram story on the studio family asking you guys what you would like to see on the next challenge video. And I got a whole bunch of really good ideas, but the idea that had the most votes was to compose a piece in just one hour. I thought this was a really interesting idea because different people have different ideas on what constitutes a composition. So some people might think a composition is just a single line melody with three notes. And some people might consider a composition to be a full-blown 35 movement opera. A composition could be any of these things. So I'm going to take the literal interpretation of a composition. And in today's video, we are going to compose a marimba solo in just one hour. Woo! So for some background, if you're new to my channel, I like to make videos about percussion because obviously I'm a percussionist, I play marimba, and I also happen to compose some pieces for marimba. You can listen to my compositions in this playlist over here, and you can also download my compositions at adamfanpercussion.com forward slash download. But I know a lot of composer colleagues, I think they're absolutely brilliant people, and I would never consider myself to be in the same league as someone who has studied composition at school. They are just on like S tier, I'm like, F tier. <laughs> but for today's challenge, I'm very interested to see what comes out because obviously I've never done this before. None of the pieces I've written took one hour to write. That's just crazy, but you never know. I've set myself some ground rules with the first rule being the most obvious one, which is that it must be completed in one hour. So at the end of the hour, no matter how far I've gotten with my composition, no matter how whack it sounds, I must perform it. Second rule is that everything has to be done mentally. I'm not allowed to use a piece of paper. I'm not allowed to record any excerpts and play them back to myself. We just have no time. The third rule is that the piece itself must last at least two minutes long. So it can't be something that is like 16 bars. The fourth rule is that the piece has to be a four mallet marimba solo and has to be playable. <laughs> and the final rule is that the key of the piece will be determined by a random number generator process, which I will do at the start of the challenge. So yes, those are the five rules that I've set myself for this composition challenge. Honestly, I don't think this piece is going to sound that great. It might sound like complete trash. It's definitely not something I would send to a publisher. So but in any case, we're still going to do it. So if you're enjoying this video so far, please give me a thumbs up. Let's get to the challenge. All right, guys, welcome to the challenge space. There's the timer behind me. Here's the marimba. Let's get to composing. So the way we're going to generate the key is I'm going to go into random.org and I'm going to generate a number between one to two, first of all. So one to two is to determine whether it's major or minor. So let's do that now. And it's given us two. So the piece is going to be minor. Sad days. And then we are going to put in a number between one to 12 because we need to determine the key. So one equals C, two equals C sharp, three equals D, etc., etc., until we get to 12, which equals B. So here we go, generate the number. Five, so that is C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So our key of our piece is going to be E minor. Okay. Okay, so without any further ado, we're going to start composing. I'm going to start the timer in three, two, one, and go. Timer has started. Okay. So I think the first thing I'm going to do to make this easier for myself is I'm going to try and find myself a melody. We know it's an E minor, which is or So we're going to see if we can make a top line melody from the scale.
So that's actually a really simple melody. It's just, it's basically just those notes. It does sound very similar to Moon. <laughs> Let's try to make it sound less like Moon. Okay, try again. Still sounds like Moon. I need to think of some bass notes, otherwise this is really weird, so... It sounds so much like Moon. Maybe we'll go back to that first one that I just did. No, I don't like it. So you'll find yourself often when you do these melodies, I think this is the hardest part. I don't really like that shoe. So we're gonna start again with something else. But yes, five minutes and I haven't gotten anything yet. Woo! Okay, let's go back to simple again because we're running out of time. It's almost been 10 minutes and I've got nothing. So go back to the start again. And 10 minutes and I've still just been mucking around. Ah, I really don't like E minor. Oh man. <laughs> Let's try going in a different direction. So before we've been going in like... We've been going up and then back down. So maybe let's go from the top down. So what if I go... Yeah! Okay, let's try that. Let's try that. That sounds a bit less like... I always do stuff like that, so let's try something more static. Okay, maybe something like that. Maybe we start with one note in each bar, then we go to three notes, so... That wasn't what I played before. <laughs> Now I want some sort of tension to happen here. I don't want it to go like I don't want I don't want that. I want something different. I think we're rolling out the big guns like and one hand rolls too suddenly.
And then we go back to that D major. Okay, okay, stop there. Let's go again. Let me make sure I can memorize this. Mm, do we want to break out into that? No, I want to go back to the D major. And I think after that, we can start breaking into the plucking strings of it. Cool, all right, let's try again. Oh, I like that. Okay, now we need to change the chord to something else. It's been like... It's been like this chord and then... So from here... We... Can't go back to E because we just did that. It's a plagal cadence. It's too too final. From, we can either go up or we can go down. But I guess it kind of depends on whether I want the bass line to dictate it or whether I want the melody to dictate it. But you guys know me. I like to work with the melody first. So let's just go back to the melody again, just to see what it is. I think it needs to be C. So I'm going to go from there to C. Alright, so now this bit, I want a melody to be more, uh, not so spacious, more dense, so I want it to be something like... Uh, Oh, I know, I know. Okay, so the first time we do the the, the, the intro... Okay, so I still think the transition period... I know, I know I wanted this to be more dense, but I think it's a bit too dense. It kind of... It's just kind of sudden for it to go from... ...to suddenly... So instead of doing that, let's let's make it simpler. Maybe something like that. Oh, maybe something like that. Sixes all the way up. Maybe not. All right, we're getting really way ahead of ourselves, but it is now 32 minutes in. So I really have to get going with this piece. Let's go back to the structure again. We, we have the first part. Okay, and then second time. Ending on a B major. Uh, what, do you, what do you call that chord? Dominant seven? So, should we use the full range or should we not? Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay, so... Okay, 
<sighs> no, that sounds really lame. So let's go from the beginning and I'm just gonna see where it takes me, but we kind of know the basic structure now. So if we go, Got it, I got it. Nah, that's a bit too much. My favorite, octaves. <laughs> I'm just coming up with random ideas now. Uh, we're, we're almost there, we're almost there. I'm trying to think of what we can do with the chorus. And I think we're gonna have to just sort of cut it a bit shorter. I don't think there's time to write a very big climactic section with such little time left, so. Got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. Uh oh, five seconds, four, three, two, one, okay. It's finished, ladies and gentlemen, we are now forced to perform the composition <laughs> as is. So I have no more time to redo it or anything. The moment I pick these mallets up, I'm gonna play it. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the piece. I don't know what it's called, but it's the piece that I wrote in one hour. Let's do it.
my pace in one hour. Okay, so that is the piece that I wrote in just one hour. And here comes the inevitable self-evaluation. I think the themes that I came up with had promise, but I didn't develop them enough. And the structure is a little bit convoluted. You can also see in the recording, I completely forgot what the climax was supposed to be. So I sort of just made it up. Oh uh, no. And then kept going. <laughs> I think if I gave myself like five hours, I'd probably be able to finish that piece and make it something presentable. But for now, Probably not. In fact, I was actually going to put a PDF download link in this video, but now upon hearing it, I think it actually doesn't sound that great. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Have you ever composed something in a short period of time? Have you ever composed something in front of the instrument on the go? Let me know what you think. And also let me know if you'd like to see any other kind of challenges on this segment. I'm really enjoying challenging myself to do these absurd things like learning pieces quickly and writing pieces quickly. So if there's anything you'd like me to try, let me know down below. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. Yes, we just hit 13,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for that. But also we are still uploading more content on this show every single week. So if you'd like to see more, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below. And I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.